Ele dá posso falar português bem o suficiente para apresentar este a palestra in Portuguese. So you'll excuse me if I speak English. But... So this is a presentation that isn't specifically about Python, but uh, because of the mix of attendees, uh, I wanted to uh, present some information that I previously had described within IBM about the best ways for communities and corporations to companies to interact, the way that a company can help utilize open source projects and cooperate to achieve mutually interesting goals. And my background is that I am on the GCC steering committee and developed the GCC PowerPC port and have been involved with IBM strategy for PowerPC and for open source in general, helping bring Linux to IBM and have it under, IBM understand how to interoperate with the GNU general public license and the way that IBM should uh, approach open source communities and its uh, initial plans for open source. So these are some of the experiences and knowledge that I have gained from my previous work on GCC and how I introduced, helped introduce that to IBM and the way that what we discovered within IBM and many corporations, you know, Sun, HP, uh, Red Hat, how, what's the best way to work with open source communities. And so hopefully you can learn from this and help uh, bring some of this knowledge back to the Python community and to corporations that want to cooperate with Python. So again, the background for GCC, which is the basis of my knowledge that I'll discuss, is it's the GNU C compiler that is, supports many different programming languages, C, C++, Fortran, Java, Objective-C, many different systems that are supported, not just Linux, but uh, Mac OS, HP UX, uh, many embedded operating systems, Solaris. So it supports a wide variety of architectures, x86, obviously, ARM, PowerPC, Itanium, you know, a very diverse set of systems, ABIs, operating systems, communities that all need to cooperate and use this basic infrastructure. And uh, this was written a few years ago, actually, GCC is approaching its 25th anniversary. Uh, Linux had its 20th anniversary, we're approaching 25 years of GCC in the GNU project, when Stallman, Richard Stallman um, introduced or announced the first version of GCC. Um, and as I mentioned, it's a worldwide developer community, and uh, a compiler that now is used in production that is necessary for not just Linux and its uh, corporate uses there, but embedded space. So a lot of different needs and requirements placed on this uh, compiler, as well as its use as a research tool in universities, in research institutes. Uh, so it has a many different, uh, not so much conflicting, but a variety of uses. So the basic outline of this talk is a little bit of background about, uh, as I mentioned, the open source communities and then discussing the step-by-step -step guide of how to approach a community, of how to create, what's the challenge involved with interacting with the community, the strategy that we have learned in IBM and, and other open source companies is effective for approaching the community, the risks and then some examples of success stories in GCC where this approach has worked. So the model of interaction that one has for open source community, there are a number of them. One can just take uh, whatever the community has to offer, not contributing any more to the community. One can look at the work that the community is performing and 
augment it, add to it, you know, expand on the work that the community has already decided to progress with. One can take another step a little bit more and specialize some work. For instance, the community is doing some work on you know, a, a Python module for databases, and one can specialize, okay, we want, we'll enhance it for DB2, we'll enhance it for Oracle, we'll enhance it in various ways, we'll add special optimizations for this feature. Um, so that's another level of more detail. One can then take the next level and start actually contributing some internal project. One created uh, another you know, framework, uh, I mean another version of Hadoop or something, want to contribute that to the open source community in general. Um, and the levels that the company can interact with the community is it can accept some contributions from the community if it has certain ideas, an enhancement here, a bug fix there, or um, it can go to the other extreme where the corporation is simply acting as a, um, a recipient for requests from the open, from the community of, oh, we want, you know, Zop to add this feature, we want, uh, you know, Zop Corporation should do this for us, Ubuntu should do that for us, you know, many, uh, you know, just, or the optimal way, or what I, we're going to talk about for the rest of this presentation is trying to find a balance where the corporation has its own needs, but it can leverage the community. It can act as, as a lever and have the community enhance and cooperate and, and um, collaborate with the work that the corporation needs done. Find the right um, separation and level of cooperation so that both sides feel that they are uh, succeeding and achieving what they need. Um, so hopefully the right balance would be uh, a mutually beneficial relationship. Um, and one needs uh, some level of, in the corporation, what's a, a business case. One needs a reason why the corporation needs to interact with the open source community. Why it wants it for marketing purposes, because Linux is important or, uh, you know, Python is important or GCC is important for the corporation's customers. You need some reason why the company wants to be involved or, I mean, for instance, with uh, uh, D.E. Shaw, which is a major investment company, uh, uh, David Shaw created a, has a D.E. Shaw research. And he just wants, because of he wants to give back to research in, in the United States, so he'll do that personally. But there's some reason, either, personal charitable interest or corporate need for getting involved. Um, and then the, the bad extremes are that the corporation does all of the work or does none of the work. That it's involved with the, the community and it's just um, sort of where, where open is only a, a word that's thrown around that the, the corporation prevents the community from really participating. They want to claim to be open but not really uh, allow any um, leadership roles or any real contributions or make it so difficult that the community can't participate. And the other extreme is a corporation that simply wants to take from the community and doesn't want to contribute to the base infrastructure or just you know use, use the community for its commercial needs because various open source projects are free, quote unquote, you know, not just Free as in liberty, not liberty, but free as in money, and they just want to use it for their, their needs. So ideally, one wants to have the community help implement parts of the project where it's, it's useful and where something that the community wants to succeed at. So one needs a, a case for, uh, there are some times when internal development is necessary. As I mentioned, there's some confidential information involved. It's, uh, a, the community doesn't consider the project a high priority, uh, or there's, the community won't benefit from the feature. It may be something that's specific to the corporation's own needs, um, and uh, they might accommodate a, a patch from a vendor, but they don't want to work on the project itself. Or there may not be the skills that some of the open source projects are now so technically detailed or require very specific information of, you know, a MIPS specific processor or uh, some very high level of skill in, in optimization technology, new technology where members of the community um, 
it, it's a very limited knowledge to be able to participate. So the, the strategy for inter, getting involved in these open source communities is to have a plan to begin with. Um, you need to prepare, sorry, um, figure out how you are engaging the community, then decide on how that, it, which part of the engagement you want to pursue, have a plan and then execution. So some of the questions for preparation are, you know, why do you want to be involved? Why does this corporation want to be involved with this particular open source project? You know, what is the business case, as I, I mentioned? So it's solely marketing, it's necessary for customers, it's necessary for uh, distributing or an API, it's competing with another company. There are various business models, but the company needs to know financially why it wants to make an investment, what it hopes to gain, and then can determine how much of its own expense it wants to contribute, how internal developers, external developers, as I'll mention later on. And for instance, with IBM, what does IBM want to accomplish? And you create a list of projects, a list of priorities of the internal project, and you create a list of what, from engagement, from talking, listening to the community, what does the community want as well? And what are their priorities? So, in a, so there's the idea that the company wants to be involved, but to be involved, it's not a, a matter of the company doing the work and then just throwing it or just showing up you know, to the, to the organization through this open source project and saying, hey, we created this entire big framework or this browser or whatever, here it is, take it, and then you get dead silence or people don't want it, and then the corporations say, well, you know, we, we, we spent two years working on this, why don't you want this project? So one of the things that a corporation needs to do is to, if it wants to contribute to a community, is engage the community, listen to the community, understand what the community wants, how it operates, who are the leaders, what's the style of development, so that one can be a productive member and gain the trust of the community. That will achieve a lot more um, you know, karma points, good feedback from the community, so they will then, the co company knows how to engage and the community will be more receptive to that engagement. So the first thing is stop talking, don't just come to the community and say, this is what we want to do. The first thing is go to the community and just join the mailing list, join the forum, join the IRC chat or whatever, and listen to what they're saying, how they interact, who are the leaders, how to start a conversation, and learn what the community wants to accomplish. Then find out, again, what's, what are the interests of the community? You know, what are the projects that the community wants to work on? Um, does the community already have the infrastructure in place? The company may want to do something very complicated. And the question is, how much does it need, does the company need to create the scaffolding for its project? Uh, for instance, with GCC, we wanted to do, IBM contributed auto vectorization. And there was just a lot of infrastructure and analysis and data flow analysis and dependencies that needed to be added in and the question of, how much is, does exist and is the company willing to make the, the time, make the effort to develop that infrastructure or does it simply want to wait for the community to develop that infrastructure later on? And when is the right, also when you listen to community, there are certain release schedules. I mean, we're now in, in more agile development, but when is the right time to approach the community with a new project? Or for instance, uh, IBM would release the Power 4, Power 5, Power 6 processor, and it can't release it too early because the information because it's proprietary, but if there's a certain release schedule when IBM is going to announce the processor to the general public, you need to find out when is the time that that information needs to be integrated, merged into the project, because if you come too late, you say, oh, well, we want to have this huge pile of patches and changes we want to make, and the community is in lockdown mode because they're about to make a release. That usually won't create a really good feeling among either participants. So you need to understand what are, what's the time scale, what's the pacing, the schedule of the project development. So the plan, again, come up with a plan, what, what needs to be done in this work? And what part can the community do? What, do you, what are the skills of the community? What's the interest of the community? What can they do? What needs to be done internally in the company. And who has the skill? Does it need to be developed internally in the company? Does it need to be developed in the open source project? 
Does it need to be developed at a university, contract as a third party? Do you sponsor the community to do the work? Do you hire someone? And what are the milestones that the intermediate steps for the project, which is very important, not just the, our goal is to have this you know, huge, far-reaching, you know, completely new um, you know, you know, big table. We want to re-implement big table. What are the incremental pieces that can be done so that we know that we're making progress and the investment is working? So come up with those stages. And then another important thing is to, for the actual execution, is to make an architecture, make a design, and make it public. Discuss it with the community. Don't come to the community with your plan as a complete solution, architected. This is one difference from the way many companies, or at least large bureaucratic companies work, and open source communities. And open source communities are more about interactive problem solving. At least the GCC community is, and I've seen PyPy is, and Python. Corporations are much more hierarchically structured, and there's someone who will be the chief architect of a project. And they'll come up with the complete design, and then that gets distributed and delegated down to the engineers to implement. But that's not how most open source communities want to work. They don't want someone, just because they have a title within a corporation, to come to the community and say, here is our design, it's perfect, it's at the you know, complete extreme, and it just works, and implement this, and all will be wonderful in the world. They want to have some feeling of participation that, that you're uh, respecting the community and that the, you're engaging them and, and understand their motivations and are allowing them to help solve the problem, not just act as, as slaves to, to do the final implementation. So another important thing is you know, request comments on that idea, start working on the project, and work in public, create an open branch. Do, don't just create some sort of a copy of the repository. This has happened many times in GCC where a, uh, a sort of small microarchitecture company will take the previous release of GCC, and which is now stable because they want to do their work on a stable release, but they will take that and start working on it. And then a year or two later, they'll now have GCC working with their architecture, but it's working with an old, old release of GCC. There have been many API changes, infrastructure changes, the community didn't know this was occurring. So it's important to do this work in public so the community can start, uh, is aware of what's going on, can comment on it uh, if they want to, at least, you know, the least surprise, less surprise is better. And another thing is, you know, contribute to the early to the project, contribute often, many frequent updates, and an end-to-end -end early prototype for a new, um, a new plan, a new feature is very, very important. People don't want to just see vaporware. They want to see something that really works early on, and that creates more momentum and interest from the community, something they can start playing with. If you give people an implementation that doesn't work, I mean, that, 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 that has many bugs, that actually encourages a lot of people to start fixing it. If it's something that's important to the community, they're interested in the project, then if you give them a basic thing, they will then start fixing it for you. That gets a lot of excitement, as opposed to waiting until it's perfect. Um, so provide them with a working prototype early, and the communities, I found, want leadership. They don't want dictators. They don't want someone to just come in and say, this is how the project should be done or this is what works, but they want someone to start marching in a direction that's of interest to them, interest to the company, someone that shows some direction, so that has a, an idea of how to solve the problem. Then they have some confidence that it will be accomplished and then they'll help actually work on the project. But remember that, that collaboration takes work. It, it demands some portability for GCC. Again, it supports many architectures, many different operating systems. One needs to be able to adapt and ensure that this project is going to work in all the various uh, uh, diverse uses of GCC. And one also needs to build some confidence in the community that this work is not going to be, as uh, some people say, thrown over the wall and abandoned. 
they need, the community needs to believe that this work will be there, and when there are bugs, when it gets integrated into a release, the company will still be there to fix it and solve the problems and support the community. So some risks involved is that some communities may not have a chief architect. The GCC doesn't really, there's Linus Torvalds in the Linux community. It depends on the community, but some may not have a single person that can say yes or no. And this is a risk for a company trying to be involved in one and not knowing if their idea will ever, you know, who's the ultimate decider to, to accept the project. Um, remember the community is, is not a contractor, it's not someone where you just go to them and say, here's my great idea, go and implement it. Um, it and there are, are different priorities. You may want to get this project done as quickly as possible, which may require more investment from the company. If you want to just accept the timeline from the community, that may take a very long time. As, as uh, Macek was describing with PyPy uh, for you know, Python 3.0 or some other, or, or NumPy, um, th some things may get done more rapidly if, you know, if there's a corporate interest. The community has its own priorities and limited time and volunteer effort. Um, and some people who may want to contribute to the project may be scared uh, because this is going to undercut a, a com another business model, some company that provides commercial support. So, and they may be a leader in this open source community. So there, there are balances for how the community is going to react, different personalities in the community. Um, and so again, just to sum up some examples of where this has worked in GCC is the instruction schedule, scheduler that was contributed by IBM very early on, auto vectorization, some work on Fortran. There are a lot of ways where IBM and many different corporations became involved in GCC and was able, were able to collaborate with the community to greater or lesser extent on the features that IBM or HP or Sun or Intel or ARM needed. ARM is doing you know, a, a lot of effort now with the Lenaro project. So there are ways to become involved and collaborate with the community and have the community help a company succeed at its purposes and not create a uh, conflicting environment to begin with. And this is the way uh, that, that we found to collaborate with an open source community and achieve goals that both parties are really interested in. So, thank you. Hope that was informative to some of you. And if there are any questions or feedback, preguntas? Gustavo, <laughs> so, so, can you please explain a little bit how the, the model of contribution to GCC works? The, the model of how contribution to GCC works. Well, GCC, GCC has a subversion repository and a mailing list. Uh, there isn't the formal sign-off project process the way that uh, the Git repository has for uh, percolating changes up the tree. Uh, but basically, people come to the GCC community on the main GCC mailing list and, or on the IRC channel and start discussing a project, and there's some with the GCC summits that occur annually or now some um, minor summits that, are, that, that Google and others have sponsored, some dis discussions there about upcoming ideas. Uh, one, uh, unlike the Linux kernel, um, GCC and all the projects in the GNU uh, project require uh, copyright assignment to the FSF. And so one will work with the FSF, request a copyright assignment, and get that form filled out, and with that one can get right access to the repository. And it's uh, recommended to create a branch if it's going to be a large, uh, invasive type of project, um, and develop it such as the link time optimization, or uh, 
the rewrite of data flow that happened in GCC, do that on a branch, and then one will merge in pieces of that branch, and people can, can see and observe how it's working. Um, it's also now more helpful, and, and, and you remind me I should mention this, that regarding Python, that uh, GCC now has a plug-in framework architecture. Uh, and one of the plugins that was actually written at Red Hat is a Python plugin, which can interact with all of the internal data structures of GCC. And so one now is actually able to uh, prototype a optimization pass for GCC in Python, and you know, or even interact with the internal data structures, you know, uh, interactively, and then contribute once that is. Uh, you know, uh, it's proven to be useful, one can then convert that into a, a C or C++ plugin and then, you know, or even eventually contribute that completely to GCC if it's enough general interest. And similarly, uh, my friend Tiago, who was here the first day, uh, worked on the GDB plugin for Python. So there's now the ability for Python scripting of GDB and Python scripting of GCC. So that's uh, another way, and, and these plugins do not require the copyright assignments. There are certain license limitations that needs to be a, 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 an approved open source style license, um, but it's able to work with uh, now GCC, and one can do more experiments that way without, uh, for, for projects that may not be of interest to the GCC or GDB community in general. Sorry, what? One, one, one can prototype them. It, one, have, have they, I'm not sure if anybody has actually uh, gone, implemented that yet, but one can um, experiment with, I mean, look at internal data structures in GCC and modify it if, and, and use uh, the Python uh, plugin as more like a, a filter to make a small modification to some instructions and then re-inject it into the compiler. So, you know, please use that to, to experiment. So, thank you. Obrigado.